Hello to the Twitch world. We're on our new schedule. So our new schedule starts at 6.30 Central Standard Time. And we had to juggle some things around. Um, unfortunately, Tammy isn't here for the start of this product review. Um, if she's able to make it, we'll get her on video here shortly. Um, but currently it is just me, myself, and I to do a product review. So Fridays now is when we are going to be doing um, our Pursuing a Passion, honest reviews of all different kinds of things. So if there are select products or sites or anything that you want or would like for us to review, please leave a comment or reach out to our social medias. You can find us on Green Oaks Gaming or Green Oaks RPG AIDS, also here on Twitch. And Friday nights is when we're going to be doing our reviews. In addition, we have had to juggle around a couple of other things. So now Wednesday night is when I am doing my inspirations, building a character or a monster from a miniature. That one is also shifted to 6.30 Central Standard Time. And Mondays, we are still doing the journey. And that has also shifted from six or from eight to 6:30 Central Standard Time. And then Sundays is when we'll pick up the adventure log, uh, where we just kind of do a review and wrap of the week. So my name is Joe. I am a long time creative and RPG enthusiast and if you haven't gotten any other background just know that I am passionate about the fantasy sci-fi world culture everything nerd um, I am an older old school player I've been playing uh, tabletop RPGs since the early 80s and still through to today I am a forever GM who only occasionally gets an opportunity to play in different games and systems, which I absolutely love, uh, just because it's a different dynamic. But this show here is all about products, or websites, or services, or something related to, but we're going to be reviewing. Now you can see I've got the screen already split up there, and there's a package that's uh, kind of dimly lit right now. And there were a couple of items, I wasn't sure which one we were going to do, so I went ahead and just made a judgment call. And I know Tammy really wanted to review this product with me. So again, if she's able to make it, we'll pop up a screen so she can be on the screen as well. But let's start adding some light. So you can see there is a package there that is labeled as Citadel Black. And then on the bottom of the package it says Colossal Onslaught Miniature Set. Colossal Onslaught. You can see it's got four miniatures. So um, Tammy actually ordered this product. And um, you can see it features four highly detailed minis designed for D&D and other ta tabletop games. Visualize the strength of the creatures with large 50 millimeter bases. Each mini is ready to play and ready to paint. And then for the contents, it's got a rotted beholder. Is that correct? Rot fed beholder. I wasn't sure when I was looking at the screen. Um, a storm weave dragon, a deep sea basilisk, and a death creep lich. Now I am very big into miniatures. If you've caught some of my other shows, you know that I do a lot with miniatures. Um, primarily, I do 28 millimeter figures uh, because I use them also in my tabletop gaming. But it's also just a fantastic way to express yourself painting. So I do some um, busts and some 28 millimeters to just to paint because I love painting miniatures. Um, miniatures and painting miniatures is definitely a big hobby of mine. 
So when I get the opportunity to check out new miniatures, I always do. Of course, my default has been for a number of years, Reaper Miniatures. Now, they're not a sponsor of this channel. However, I highly recommend checking out Reaper Miniatures. They've just announced their Bones 6 Pledge Manager starting shortly. So if you're interested in getting in on their Bones 6 Kickstarter, make sure you go to reaperminiatures.com for more information. Again, they're not a sponsor. When I talk about how much I love Reaper products, it's because I really love Reaper products. I use them extensively in my tabletop gaming, as well as they've done a couple of busts that I've just really enjoyed painting. And um, I'm, I'm just a big fan of their sculpts because they were one of the earliest uh, miniature manufacturers to start doing more dynamic poses and really looking at the products that they're putting out. So big shout out to them. But in the meantime, the Citadel Black package arrived. And again, Tammy ordered this one. Um, I had not previously seen it before. Uh, I opened the box and uh, saw what was in it. There was definitely a, uh, a giddy bit of glee that came out of me, I'm sure, uh, for two reasons. One, because I do love miniatures. I love all different types of miniatures. I love finding ways to use miniatures in my games. But two, primarily because of that beholder. So I've painted a couple of, they're called eye tyrants, um, but as beholders for some miniature exchanges and commissions. But I personally don't have a beholder that I have in my collection and I use them quite frequently in my games. So for me not to have a miniature to represent one of the monsters that I use very frequently is, is kind of odd, um, but it, it's twofold. One of them is, uh, again, I, I just have not had the opportunity to get one for myself. Uh, when I have had the opportunity to paint them, they've either been commissions or used in miniature exchanges. So a beholder itself, I just, I have not had one of my own. So I was excited to see this one in here. And um, I, at first I did not see what the different sculpts were. I thought the uh, sea basilisk was possibly a giant snake. I didn't pay much attention. And then I thought some type of a small dragon. And I did recognize pretty quick the lich. I think part of it was both the pose as well as kind of the crown piece on them. But uh, box-wise, it came in this box in another box with just some um, air bubbles, uh, the large uh, inflated air bubbles. But you can see it shipped out pretty good. It's been sh sitting on the shelf for about a week, and uh, I have been fingering it here and there, but um, I have not yet opened it. So the first thing we've got to do is maybe find a craft knife or some clippers that I can open the package with. And it just has a little taped seal. Pop that open. Pop this open. And then pull out this blister. The box, you can see it's a pretty good sized box. I know it's kind of hard to see when it's on the uh, when it's on the table, but a good sized box for sure. And then there are a guest coming in. Let's see what we can see here. I'll just get in here nice and close. Well, we'll get that uh, camera coming up here pretty quick, too. Look at that. Camera as well. Hi. So Tammy able to join us. Um, actually, good timing. So I went ahead and dove into the Citadel Black. Okay. Um, just because. I've been antsy to get into this one. 
Because of miniatures. Me and miniatures. And I made him wait. We did uh, decide that we were going to do um, do these miniatures. So I am just sticking to it. So I'm going to try to leave a little bit of screen. I'm adjusting the cameras here a little bit just so we can have some on screen as well. But we'll also uh, talk about them. You know, if you want to put the screen on there, they can just hear my voice. Yeah, if you like. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, readjust. Perfect. Oh, now it's sad. I can't see it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start on the upper right with the sea basilisk. Now that was one of the ones that when I was looking at the pictures, I really thought that looked cool. I mean, lots of detail. Yeah, the detail on it is actually really good. The scales are really well sculpted. I'm, I'm gonna pull it off camera here just for a second so I can see. Um, I'm looking for mold lines, so I do see the mold line of where the mold fastens. Um, it's not a bad mold line, so cleaning it up is not going to be very bad. I mean, even in, you can see a little bit of shadow of it there, but just that little very bit is an easy cleanup, so not too bad. And then on the snake itself, I am not, I mean, they hid the seams really, really well. Did it come already on the base? Yeah, they all came pre-assembled. Nice. And uh, 50 millimeter base. These are um, what's considered to be display bases because they don't have a vertical side. Um, but they work really well on tabletops as well, so not bad. Um, I was actually interested when I first saw this, like I said I, um, earlier in the video, I wasn't aware that this was supposed to be a sea basilisk. So I thought it was going to be some type of a giant snake. And the crystals, I had planned to do um, kind of an underground scene because I use giant snakes often in some of the areas that I feature uh, ancient dwarven, uh, think mines of Moria um, that have been abandoned. So dwarven uh, complexes that have been abandoned to time and oh, this yeah. type of beast having moved into the subterranean area. Um, but with it being a sea one, it actually um, it gives me some idea to put in, uh, to still utilize these as crystal, so paint them as crystal, uh, but to look at how I can do like maybe a sandy beach and work in some small elements that look like shells and what about starfish. Color? So color, I'm actually, because it's a sea, I'm actually thinking more vibrant colors, which matches my challenge to myself for 2022 of adding more color, being more colorful in how I paint minis. Um, so I'm thinking kind of tropical colors with um, those vibrant greens and blues, those I love uh, it. oranges and yellows tied into it, but really making it um, very bright. And then the crystals I thought about having something with some type of a, uh, like an opaque pink, um, a rose quartz is what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's, if that'll be the final cut, but that's what I'm like envisioning now. That'll look really cool. But the um, mouth, I mean, you look at all those teeth. Yeah, yeah. Definitely is something really cool. And some of the pros about this too is if, regardless of how you paint it, if you go to use it, it can substitute for a giant snake pretty easily. So I would have to say if there's one negative that I can see on that, it's the fin on the top of the head. Yeah. I would say that everything else is so well shaped. Um, and I just don't feel like that fin is quite as yeah, because detailed. It, well, and it doesn't do a whole lot. It doesn't go through the back, through the entire back mm -hmm. of the snake like you would think a sea serpent. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't have a whole lot. It's like a an afterthought mohawk. Yeah, yeah. And that to me is the one element that's a little bit off for me. Now let's go into the dragon. 
I love how raised everything is on his back. Um, the spikes? It's different. It's very different. It's very different. I, I would say... I would almost wish that they had a tiny bit of a sharper feel, like, looking at them. Right. Um, but I do think color will help that a lot. Uh, what kind of dragon is it? Um, so, they call it... Uh, what do they call it? Uh, a storm... Storm, storm leaf, leaf dragon. Storm leaf dragon. So, I can tell you, of all of them, this is the one that is, like, the least interesting for me. Is it? Yeah. For a couple of reasons. So, as I'm looking at it, it will require a little bit of green stuff or some type of repair. It does have some seams and gaps, uh, which Definitely. isn't too bad. But the amount of sculpting on, like, the scales on the side, you can see it's just... It's almost like small impressions and not really... Yeah. And they don't match. Look at the side. They've got these oblong, like, scaly things. Then on the legs, they've got smaller... Tiny reptilian Like, dimples. Type. And then the big spikes. I mean, it's... So it feels a little off. It feels very off. It feels very discombobulated. And then the pose, they've got it like it's flying, but he's the back end looks like he's squatting. I mean, it just... It's a funky, funky I don't know. Pose. I would almost... So to me, looking at it and just trying to imagine a different way to take it is that back spike on the end of its tail. Yeah. Make that into like a stinger. Like a scorpion yeah. stinger. I mean, I think that that one's going to take some more imagination. Oh, definitely so. And creativity and maybe a little bit of, I don't remember what it's called. It's a class that they have at ReaperCon. Um, Conversions? Yes. Possibly a little bit of conversion work just to... So my other challenge that I have with it is if you compare it to a 28 millimeter miniature so this one is a, the cleric that we built in our inspirations and it just is not that large of a dragon so you would have to use it as um probably a, a young dragon at the oldest which isn't bad using young dragons especially on that kind of early tier and mid tier characters isn't bad it just um, well, it looks like they've got some resin spilt on here, too. You can see it, the sheen on it. Yeah, I can. I do know that um, one of your challenges with the dragons that you've done, though, is that they were so large. Yeah, very much so. So, much. I mean, there is that little bit of an element of it won't be quite so hard. I, To me, it calls to mind something more like this. And I would like the design catapenius. it to go into a similar feel. And I mean, you could put those two together in some kind of a scene. Real quick, grab me that dragon just on the bow of <laughs> Sophie's Revenge. So this is another miniature that I have this not yet. It's a better example of the spikes. Touched. But yeah, the sculpt on this one um, for the spike back. I think is executed much better. So we'll move the cleric and move this guy a little bit, but um, I don't remember <laughs> the sculptor of this one. You know, the funny and just random thinking, but that's a mom, the and, mom the and the baby. I just thought that's, that. Because um, that so could make it work. Here for some size relevance. That could make it work. Maybe. If you used it as a baby to that mom. But, I mean, just a massive difference in scale. So, yeah, I definitely would have to get creative on how to use this. And I can actually do a little bit of looking. I might be able to tell you who that other one was from. Yeah, it should be in, in there. So, for me, out of the four, this one is the one that is... 
the uh, like least desirable for me. Um, just a, it's okay, but it's I would say more mediocre, more mediocre. Um, I believe that is uh, that that last one that we put in here Show with that heart. Citadel Black is from NTX 3D Print. Um, they were at ReaperCon 2021, and that's where we purchased that large dragon print. Um, and uh, definitely a big kudos to them. Fantastic sculpt, very dynamic sculpt, and just a really cool dragon that uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting some paint on. Um, so next I want to go over the Lich. So yeah, this one here, I knew pretty quickly that this was supposed to be a Lich. Um, again, partly because of the crown and the kind of skull looking face and a little bit of the dynamic pose. Um, so there again, a little bit of a challenge on this one because most of the time liches are just ancient wizards who have died as they're studying magic. So it is a massive um, figure. But that was part of why I bought this set was they were all bigger figures. Yeah. And I was hoping that it would give more detail. Yeah, 100%. So in game, I would actually use this one as a more powerful lich. So I wouldn't go right out of the stats because your stats is going to be an average lich. Right. This is one that at some point we may end up using in Inspirations and doing the monster sheet for this miniature because this definitely needs to be statted up. Um, so I think it was maybe two weeks ago we statted up a, a zombie as a lich, as a frost giant lich. I would do the same thing with this and stat it up differently so that one, it matches the scale and you're presenting a more formidable foe to your players. Because something like this, this is going to be something where not only have they spent the eons becoming a lich and studying magic, but and this is just a horrific figure. When you put this on the table and the characters, players, minis around it i mean they're going to be they should quickly realize that oh we're out of our element here this is something that is not just a regular lich it'll also help cut metagaming so i, I honestly see this guy in like purples and blues i do too very much so. okay good purples blues and reds actually a little bit too those more royal royal colors yeah but i mean yeah just I do like that a lot of the clothing is not like worm eaten and everything, but it's got these little bits of like ghostly flares to them and everything, but it's not worm eaten and holy and all of that. The rod has a little bit of a bend, but um, I'm going to try the uh, boil technique that we use on bones and uh, I believe that should uh, solidify that. Yep, straighten that out. Um, the face is not so uh, like just a skeleton so you can still use like vampire flesh paint on it um, gotcha. or ghostly ghoul paint colors on it and show it as a uh, a lich with actual skin still remaining so totally random totally out there this one looks like one that I would try to do the light source painting. I don't Yeah, know. object OSD. source lighting, OSD. And yeah, definitely so. Especially with villainous types, it really adds to that feeling of dread. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, OSL. OSL, yes. Uh, object source lighting. And uh, you could do it a couple of ways. You could have it coming out of, so maybe have that center kind of knob in the staff glowing and have the object source lighting coming up from that staff or you can have it from like up above what about and his front. eyes yeah you can do it from the eyes and have some glow coming out um, there are a couple of ways you could do it you could do uh, two competing osls so have one from the staff um, kind of shining up and one almost from behind lots of different ways but yeah osl 
on this figure I think would make a lot of sense, especially if you're using good terrain where you yeah. can really have it dark and and the brightest things in that type of situation should be your heroic characters unless they're playing evil characters which I think could happen. The, this one would be good for the OSL because it doesn't have the tiny trinkets and things like that that you have to play without light with. Yeah, very much. Um, and that's why I was thinking it would be good for that. Yeah, so this is my second favorite out of this kit. Second favorite. And then the last miniature out of this kit, I'm going to juggle stuff around so we can get it in, is the Beholder. Now I'm going to admit flat out, this is the reason I bought this kit. So the Beholder, you can see it's got the clear sprue just like the dragon did to elevate it up so that it looks like it's floating. Um, I want to go over the base real quick. So it is on the 50 millimeter base. This looks more just like rubble um, and coins, but there are some some things that you could possibly paint as gems you can see in there. Um, and so definitely a hoard, I would say. Um, I wish they would have put a little more of it on the base though. Yeah, to fill it up. Yeah. And then the treasure, you can see there is a little bit in there as well. That's going to be hard to paint. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to paint um, getting in there. I do wish that the lid was not attached. Now it is pretty thin, so if you wanted to, if you were really a stickler for details, you could cut carefully it. cut it with a hobby knife, being very careful so you don't cut yourself, um, <laughs> and then uh, reattach it, uh, pop, possibly even pin it in place more open or just where it is. But yeah, the base itself, um, it, I would probably go through and put some more stuff. I would even go through and put in some um, like skeleton, broken up skeleton bits for bones and stuff, just to decorate this up a little bit. I'd hate to just, just because it's do a so dirt base with grass or anything like there. that. Yeah. And this is a big base that should have a lot more detail to it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, should all of the eyes on the arms, I guess, should they all curve in like that? Ooh, that is a very good question. Um, not specifically. So beholders, uh, one of the things is that they can see pretty much everywhere because their eyes can go in different directions. My guess is they sculpted this to where, I mean, this is you're looking at it and it wants all of its attention on you but for on the tabletop yeah, they should be going in different directions um, just to remind the players that you know if they have a rogue who's going to try to do a uh, misty step behind it and get a sneak attack that's near impossible on a beholder so random question is that one of the things is it too big to do the water, the boiling, or whatever to shape them a to little better? Um, no, definitely not. Um, so I've used the boiling technique on uh, parts of Sophie's Revenge. Okay. So yeah, you can do that on any of them. My biggest concern is I don't know what the material is, so I don't know how well it'll take a reshape. Gotcha. But it'll be interesting to, to yeah, check and see. Yeah, I would love to see the eyes spread out a touch more on that. It does look like it's a two-part print. So the eye stalks all in like a comb um, and then coming over. So I would call this the Beholder's Comb Over. How about that? How about that? <laughs> so this is the Beholder's Comb Over. Um, so most Beholders, they're actually not out of just the back, but they're all throughout the head. But Beholders are... Um, so they're called uh, monstrosities for a reason because they are very different and mon monstrous. So they could come in different forms and colors and all of that. But here's, yeah, I like the beholders to have their eyes more Here's all over. my random thought to go with that. So it doesn't look like a super complicated sculpt on those eyes. I would almost use green stuff on the back 
and add one or two eyes in the back that are watching you know what i mean yeah yeah or you could even do um so thinking of color and paint you could do you know how uh there are like butterflies and birds and everything that on their wings it looks like eyes mm -hmm. it'd be kind of cool to paint something like that like a camouflage of uh, an eye in the back or something like that yeah uh, but yeah there's very i mean really there's no texture on these tentacles um yeah you which could. is surprising because there's so much texture on the front um i would actually have to paint in some type of i don't know what i would do, i would too i would paint yeah some type of striping or stippling or something just to make a visual impression but i very much think that you could put a couple more in the back and have that beholder looking different directions yeah and just for the tabletop piece of it yeah yeah um now i do have to say that um so it's got these Big old massive open jaw, uh, which is cool. Uh, the tongue coming out like venom, almost. Uh, also, kind of cool. You could do some good things with some uh, like resin and wet effects to have it like drooly or really wet looking. Some type of a gloss mm -hmm. finish there. Does it have bumps on the tongue, or is it pretty? No, it's smooth. very smooth. Very smooth. It's so got you a don't almost have crease. to add that texture in there. Yeah. Um, now the eye, I actually, and again, this is all personal opinion. This is all just my personal opinion, but the eye, I, I wish they did not have that pupil sculpted in there. I still think that's something that you can fill in with green stuff. Yeah. You'd have to do a lot of cleanup because it does have some elevated ridges as well. It's got a lot of, um, seams. Yeah. I mean, that thing's got a lot of seams. I like to, for eyes, so the Eye Tyrant, which is the Beholder-esque that I paint quite a bit of, I like to do different effects with the eyes, have it looking different ways, things like that. So having the eye sculpted, um, for me as a painter, is a little detracting. But I would also, yeah, and I agree with that. I would say somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience with eyes, that is a really good roadmap. Or painting, because again, these are designed to pull out of the box and use on the tabletop right away. So they're ready to go. They're ready to play. So I can see that element in that by providing those types of details, they're making it for the tabletop gamer who is not the painter first i would say absolutely that that's not a competition right move. yeah this is for tabletop use 100 percent, 100 percent. but because i don't have a beholder in my arsenal this is going to come in handy for my tabletop play um but i yeah, wish it's... you had the reaper one to put it up next to yeah um just to show the examples and some of the variants where the thoughts are coming from yeah let me see i believe i may have um i may have an example here well this is on my phone but let's see if the camera will pick it up so that is an eye tyrant that I painted. And the eye there, I think it looks pretty decent. I think it looks so real. You can see those um, eye stalks going in different directions. So this one also has eyes on the body. Which a beholder generally doesn't, but again, it's a fantasy. The body's world. very um, different shaped. Very different shaped. So there it is before the eye was painted. You can see it's just a globe. Just for reference. So none of the eyes there have been painted. And then there, that's where the eyes are being painted. So you can see on the eye stalks too. 
the uh, the variance from not painted to painted. Mm -hmm. And then in there, I painted all of the eyes on the eye stocks different colors because they have different ray effects. Gotcha. That's how they cast their magic is out of their eye stalks. I think that the eyes on this, the little eyes, are a little more well defined. Absolutely, 100%. And I think that you'll be able to do more detail with the small eyes yeah. than you were on the other one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that main eye is a little distracting. Yeah. And as opposed to that globe shape, this is, a, I mean, it's like a triangle almost. Yeah, very much, very much. It'll still be interesting to see yeah, how it comes out. But yeah, very, very, I am kind of disappointed in that. So but they overall, call this a rotted pea holder. A uh, rot fed. Is it rot fed? Yeah, rot fed pea holder. Oh, yeah. But uh, again, it's going to be good to be able to actually have a beholder for my tabletop um, because I do use beholders a lot. And uh, so it'll be good to have something on there. And the pros about this, again, if you're a tabletop gamer, it is ready to go right out of the box. It's got enough detail that on the table you can definitely clearly tell what it is. Um, and if you're looking to put some paint on it you could do a speed paint on this or an, or airbrush it yeah super quick and easy and you're going to really highlight those details that are already sculpted in and um, it's going to look fantastic on the table when you put it out against the uh, characters miniatures so um, that's one thing about the scale that is good because that will yeah, let's uh, do this one here on that scale real quick. So you can see as a, so generally beholders are considered large creatures. This is a medium creature. So it's a little small um, in D&D scale, but again, it's a fantasy game. And yeah. when you look at it from an overall piece, um, you, could, you could consider that large with the eye stocks and everything. And because it doesn't say that's with the eye stock stretched out or anything, so right. I think it works pretty decent. So Citadel Black, and then all of them on the bases have the Citadel Black uh, logo stamped in. So all of their bases have their branding, which is important for a company. Well, for me, this was the first time that I've really looked at much as far as Citadel goes. Yeah, me too. Um, very much, they have great quality paints. I mean, they are definitely a player within the space. Don't. 100%. Um, and so that was what really attracted me to it. Yeah, I think um, the, as a GM to, for them to focus on monster packs, is pretty important. I think there was a good opportunity for uh, them to be able to have things that, again, are super ready for tabletop. Um, for a lot of players and GMs, I guess, not just uh, role players, but players who are also GMs, uh, that is pretty important because when you're able to add these types of elements into your gameplay, it just helps with both immersion it helps with if you have players who are into tactical play and looking at movement and approaches and things like that uh, and it really helps elevate your game beyond just theater of the mind so having these little bits of elements that you can put on the table is super important in my opinion um, it is for me uh, i really love to use miniatures so uh, being able to have something that is like really designed for immediate tabletop use or painting and fits really well i think the elements of what D, &D creatures are mm -hmm. i think is pretty good i mean so for me um if i'm being 100 percent honest i might have a slight bit of buyer's remorse um just compared standards-wise to some of the other stuff that we've seen. 
Yeah. But for, that's coming from the viewpoint of somebody that looked at a lot of minis in a show versus somebody that used them a lot on a tabletop. Yeah. Well, but also I think you've been dealing in, in the miniatures world for a number of years. Um, by being my enabler and having to put up with me with miniatures, I definitely get it because I would say, um, I don't know what we paid for it. Um, it was nineteen ninety nine. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. So twenty bucks. I wouldn't feel as bad about dropping twenty bucks on this four pack if I were uh, a casual RPG well, who wanted them for tabletop use. I wouldn't have a lot. Now I would say that um, I would have some remorse just because of all of the miniatures that I have. Uh, had the uh, real fortunate pleasure and privilege to be able to deal with over a number of years. Um, I can say I would not, this probably would not be my go-to to seek out miniatures. Right. But this is, I mean, this is also a, a pretty limited example. Yeah. Um, I think from my standpoint, I'd rather... I'd like to see what they have in the smaller, normal scale. Yeah, 28 millimeter and um, judge how, from there. How they're, yeah. I mean, if their sculpts are really good there, you know, is this, like you said, the size of these, I think, makes them a great tabletop element. 100%. Absolutely. And from that tabletop perspective, they're great. And the price is amazing for that size mm -hmm. um yeah it just for me from the or from the point of view of what i saw at ReaperCon in the msp um these would take so much work to get them to a point where they would be acceptable yeah and i may have some of that bias as well because again as a painter first right i when I'm looking at miniatures, 90% of the time I'm looking at paint first. How am I going to paint it? How is it going to look painted? And um, again, that is some of my bias, uh, just because I look at it from that perspective first. This one has more detractors for painting and more, uh, I can't think of the word, more pros if you're just looking at it for tabletop use. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do have to keep reminding myself that their primary piece is designed for tabletop use. Um, with that, I do think they're good. But yeah, as from a painting standpoint, so let me let me go through and re-rate. So for me, I was most excited about the Beholder because I don't have a Beholder. So as, and I was too, but... As a painter, that one has dropped off my list. Because of all the gaps. Yeah, because of so much. And the to, lack of detail. And, well, and it's just so, it's so fixed. There's no ability for me to be creative, as creative as I want to be on the beholder. I can't do different things with the eye. Um, the only thing I can really control is color mm -hmm. on the sculpt. And how can I make the color unique and different and exciting. But the, I can't impact the sculpture. Um, at all with my painting. So, so for me, that one, f as a painter, is... On the bottom. On actually. the bottom. On but the bottom. that's what's funny is, as a tabletop, as a gamer, that is the top piece, Absolutely. in my opinion. Same for me. And as a painter, yeah, it's the bottom. Um, and then for me, as a painter, the top is actually still the sea basilisk. Because there's a lot more opportunity to do some creative coloring. The sculpt is good enough. Really good. Yeah. yeah, the sculpt is good enough that it's got nice details that I can actually accentuate with paint. And because it's something as simple as a snake, it allows me to not have to... Um, it, I guess it doesn't give me as much uh, 
challenge being or opportunity to be creative maybe I don't know how to word it it better. does it gives you the opportunity in the colors and but it's not a piece you're going to use as much right so this one to me from a painter standpoint this one's amazing yeah this one's the best out of the four and for a painter for a tabletop this one's actually probably my bottom so second um, a place for me second from bottom. for tabletop um, for tabletop yeah uh, but part of it like I said is I can use it oh, in my dwarven it. cities um, in my abandoned dwarven cities uh, I can use it on some of my um, uh, waterborne campaigns if I want to especially if I'm going to paint it with that uh, tropical fish kind of yeah, coloring you, you're gonna have to um, I'll do to it so the lich is kind of second place for both right in the middle so for me. the lich for me uh, there's a lot of good opportunity to paint it with great colors and everything um, and OSL so it's got it's got good potential for paintability it also has good options for tabletop because I can really create a dynamic villain um, as kind of a center piece of a story for a campaign or even a series of adventures so for me that one is actually sitting really pretty for both painting and tabletop use okay and then the dragon I am gonna mess with you on this dragon so I am this, I, I kind of go odd places in my mind at times thinking of things. I actually really like this one from an art standpoint, believe it or not. So as you had the big dragon there with it, yeah. and the mom and the baby, I was envisioning a diorama with a rock-like nest. Right with the big one coming down and the little one so to me there's potential for some like cool stuff like that tabletop i would say it's yeah probably not the best thing but from an art standpoint i didn't like it until i saw it next to the other dragon and that kind of made it a little better so then i'll one you i'll one up you the challenge then is for you to get another one of those dragons because that dragon is going to be a dragon in campaign on tabletop painted beautifully it's going to look amazing it's going to be dynamic and i'm going to use it in my tabletop so i'll need another one so that i can make you a <laughs> diorama with a mom and a baby dragon isn't that a cool idea that is a really I cool mean, item with a rock nest yeah yeah you can build it on i mean if you're doing a decent diorama I mean, you have something that's, you know, maybe um, 14 inches by 8 inches and make it like a cliff side. Yes. Um, I think you could do some really cool things. You could really make that with the right kind of, I mean, a similar dragon to the yeah. bigger one for the mom. Yep. And that one has a baby. Yeah, 100%. Because even elements of their tail are similar, similar. enough the that you could are... do a really cool diorama with that. I think that could be pretty cool. Use some green stuff, patch it up, really um, yeah. play into the art element of it. That would be a very cool diorama. Yeah, and I think it's a better diorama piece than tabletop piece. Yeah, I agree. I agree because aside from uh, old wormling or a very young uh, and juvenile young dragon, it just does not fit. No, um, but, in tabletop. Yeah. But there again, like I said, just as we've been sitting here, I mean, even its base has those rocks on it. Yeah. Or just take it and build it. You know, I mean, so this kit for me or this set for me really had ups and downs and it really depends how how you view it you're looking at it yeah definitely how you view it and if you're buying this strictly from an art standpoint it's not the kit for you yeah don't waste your money look for 
a single sculpt that has better high quality details um, and go with a known sculptor, and a manufacturer who's going to have it. yeah good quality, whether it's plastic or metal, whatever the case may be, look for that high quality that you're able to have a really good clean finish and be able to really express yourself and augment the sculpt. Um, if you're looking for a tabletop this accessory, one is, this one's a good, a a good decent, value. A yeah. good value. I wouldn't say it's fantastic. Um, but it's it's good, like I said. For the for, dollars. Yeah, for the dollars for me, I'm going to use it for, I'm definitely going to use the Beholder. I'm definitely going to use the Lich, which won't get as much. Um, and I'm definitely going to use the Snake. So three out of four. Paint the dragon and put it on your desk. Yeah, I can. Work. Oh, you know what I could do is my dad has been dying for a purple dragon you could you so could i have been meaning to paint him the pd holding the pizza i would do that maybe we'll see does that mean you're not buying me a second dragon? <laughs> i want that second dragon please you know you can't see all of his minis from where he's got these cameras positioned and i'm pretty sure that's intentional but i can tell you and you can see by the grin on his face. Last year for from Reaper, we got into Bones 5. And I'm pretty sure we got into Bones 5 for about $500. And almost 300 miniatures. More than 300. Because you can see it in his smile. And then they had a second round that we still haven't got. So he has a four foot by four foot shelf full of unpainted miniatures. That's what I do. So you don't really need another dragon, I'm but just, I'll get you one. I'm just saying for a diorama. I'd love to make you a diorama. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I could use that for, uh, for a purple dragon if needed. Yep. Um, there are a lot of different things that we could do with that one. So, um, Send yeah, for it to a, Alex. yeah, for a tabletop um, value, twenty bucks. Uh, I think it was a good value. Um, I imagine they have more kits than just this one. I didn't dig in really far because I saw this, and I guess that the beholder was the reason I bought this. Yeah. But yeah, I would. We'll we'll do a little more research. But I imagine they have more kits, and uh, probably a lot more miniatures for twenty dollars. Um, needing a beholder, uh, I would say it, it suits the need with a couple extras that I'll be able to use in different formats and at different times, um, especially when many of the beholder miniatures are very difficult to find because of either low stock, um, people price gouging, things so like that. Piece. Yeah, so uh, definitely a, a decent tabletop value. Uh, Citadel Black is the company. Um, These were bought on Amazon. Bought on Amazon. And yeah, overall it's a good value. Um, from a painter's standpoint, look elsewhere from a tabletop standpoint. I would say comparatively maybe to uh, like WizKids, it's definitely a good value. So if you're looking at getting miniatures for your tabletop role-playing games, give Citadel a black, Citadel Black a check and see if they may have things that will work for you at the tabletop. Um, if you're a miniature painter and uh, yeah, you're looking for something that's going to be more paintability, uh, look elsewhere. But overall, a good review, I think. We gave it uh, honest feedback. Four yeah. miniatures, 20 bucks. Um, it is what it is. I'll use some of them on tabletop, and we'll find out if one of them leads to another dragon purchase, if it leads to a happy father, or if it leads to a happy grandson, or if it leads to a diorama. We'll find out um, probably within a year. <laughs> If I painted one miniature a day, maybe a year. Um, but that's our show again uh, starting this week on our new schedule. We hope it hasn't thrown people off. 
Oh, look at that. Um, MJMJ. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Hello. Uh, hope you're having a great night. Um, we're getting close to wrapping it up, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you pop them in there. But hello. Thank you for checking us out. And hope it's been enjoyable. Just as a uh, reminder for the video, Green Oaks Gaming and... I'm Joe. With me is Tammy, helping with reviews. We've got a new schedule started this week. Most of the days have shifted from 8 p.m. Central Standard Time to 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Wednesdays are when we're going to do a show called Inspirations. We use a miniature and build a character, which is kind of what kind of uh, started this program. Uh, Fridays we do our Pursuing a Passion where we're going to be reviewing products, websites, different things related to the hobby and community. Saturday is painting, so bringing it to life. Starting at noon we're just going to be in the studio doing raw miniature painting, talking about all things miniatures, painting, hobby, RPGs, game systems, you name it. Um, this last weekend I think I talked on and off about the Mandalorian for a while. And then Monday's the journey. Where will your adventures take you? So it's all about world building and exploring world building and exploring the worlds that are out there. So we're in the process of showing how to start diving if you have a created world, how to start looking at it as you approach your games and diving into more area focused uh, spots on your table and then Sunday afternoon we will do the adventure log where we just do a review and wrap up from the week so make sure to check out our schedule check out all of our social medias we have a lot on Facebook we have a lot on YouTube uh, but we do have a Patreon page if you're interested in helping support the channel anything that we get from our Patreon course goes right back into the studio and the content and the equipment so it is uh, we consider it a nonprofit because we hope that everything goes right back to the community so thank you for the opportunity to review products for you if you have ideas or anything that you think we should check out and review make sure to send us that so we can look and see if it is something that we can fit into the show. Other than that, have a great evening. I'm not enjoy sure. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're off for the weekend. If so, enjoy. It's starting now. Um, we are not going to do a raid. We do just hit the wall at the end, and it is simply because um, twofold. Generally, I would dump it to one of the groups that I follow, but the schedules don't quite line up and I don't want to drop you just to something that is inactive. So we are going to hit a wall here and uh, just stop the stream, but make sure to give us a follow, help us grow, and help us reach new people each time that we can reach out and talk to other people in the community. So have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next show Saturday, bringing it to life painting in the studio. Have a great evening.